Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. WTF is the Walking Dead survival instinct. This popped out rather quickly. A few months ago, this was announced as a game and then suddenly it popped up on Steam. The coverage of it up to this point has been almost universally negative. And the reason for that being that every asset we've seen of the game so far has been awful. The impression of it up to this point is that it is going to be a piece of shovelware in the classic sense of the word. Using a license to shovel out a very quick product that's clearly not up to spec, very low on quality control and standards, short and designed to exploit the fan base of something that is currently very popular. Funnily enough, of course, there was a series of games based on The Walking Dead that was anything but that in the form of The Walking Dead by Telltale, which is considered by many to be their best work yet. It was an exceptionally good adventure game. But now this comes along from Terminal Reality. Published by Activision, this is a full-priced release by the guys that brought you Star Wars Connect. Oh dear god. They have made a couple of reasonable games in the past, including Blood Rain and Blood Rain 2. They were pretty good, but for the most part, they have made some pretty bad games. I think their only really standout release, which I would say was exceptional, was actually Ghostbusters. And you might think, Ghostbusters? Really? Yeah. Did you play the latest Ghostbusters game? It's really, really good, and you should actually try it. PC port's kind of lousy, but the actual game itself you can probably pick up for like $5. It's, it's well worth it. So you think maybe, just maybe, there might be some hope with this licensed title. I'm going to go in and investigate. So before we do that, let's check out the options menu, because this is fairly relevant for any Activision PC port that, are, generally speaking, are fairly poor. This is, in some ways, no exception. So the options menu isn't bad. Yeah? It has some things you can do with it, certainly. You can turn on anamorphic widescreen if you need it. Usually you wouldn't. And Anisotropic filtering, shadow detail, and light shafts, as well as a form of anti-aliasing is available. Also, sync FPS. Usually I would turn this off. It defaults to 30, which is lol-tastic. But turning it off causes horrendous screen tearing, which is quite unusual. Most games these days don't really screen tear, mostly because of the triple buffering technology. And V-Sync is quite the load on the GPU, so generally speaking, you don't want to use V-Sync unless you absolutely have to. In this case, though, I have to, and that also means that running on my 120Hz monitor, this game will only run at 60 frames per second, which is kind of first world problems, but I feel obliged to mention it anyway. Also, any major change to this in a save will cause the game to crash. It will save the options, but you'll have to reload the game. At one point, the game crashed to such a degree that I had to actually log out of Windows in order to get my mouse cursor back. Not great. Audio options are completely bare bones. There are no separate options for things like dialogue, ambient sound, things like that. So it's a weak source in the extreme. Subtitles, yes and no. That's always nice to have, especially when I'm doing a video. And then we can also look at the controls. Now, the controls are fully rebindable, which is nice. Don't get me wrong. As you can see right there, these are the controls available. It does actually have an inventory screen. I mean, there's going to be some parts of this game that I think you're going to be kind of surprised by. And then somewhere you're going to say, oh, yeah, I expected that. So you can rebind all this, which is nice. I actually rebound my peak left and peak right. It's quite nice to see that feature come back in games. Most of them don't have it these days. But yeah, you can peak left and right around corners, so I rebound that to Q and E, Deus Ex style. Was it Deus Ex? That yeah, God, it's been actually been a while since I played that. I really should reinstall it. Yeah, you can peek in that game. Unfortunately, what it doesn't have is any way whatsoever to deal with the mouse acceleration, and it is bad. It is probably the worst mouse acceleration I've played in a PC game in the last few years. It is nigh on unplayable in some areas. So, let's go into the game and find out exactly what is going on with Walking Dead Survival Instinct. I've got to say, my first instinct was to run away from this game as fast as possible, but I, you know, I have a job to do. I have a responsibility to you guys. Oh, wow, it started me from the beginning of this area again. That's lovely. So when I actually saved this, I was about, I think, 20 minutes into the game. Apparently, if you quit out, then you lose all your progress. So great. Awesome. Well, that's cool. I guess I can repeat some of the parts where I found some glaringly obvious, horrible stuff. So this game allows you to pick up survivors along the way, which is kind of an interesting feature. In this case, we've got this guy. I don't know what the hell's going on with him. 
you can actually give them stuff. Yeah? So there's, there's a few RPG aspects to this, as you can see here. You can heal, equip, and send survivors to find resources. Each survivor has traits that can affect the risk level. Lower the risk level by sending more survivors out and giving them weapons. So there's some traits, as you can see. And it doesn't tell you at all what they actually do. Maybe if I click info, it will. Nope, didn't think so. <laughs> that is totally and completely useless. So I can ask him to do a few different things. Now, this is pretty innovative. I'm pretty sure this was stolen from a few Flash games here and there when it comes to zombie survival stuff. But it's neat that it's in this game. So, what we're going to do. Well, I don't need food. Fuel would be nice. I'm pretty low on ammunition, so... Let's send him to find some ammo. Group scavenge risk is 30%. Although, if I were to give him something, I could probably fix that. I don't really want to give him the hammer, because that's sort of my primary melee weapon. But I can't give him the knife, even though you don't use it, because it uses it for the quick kills. You can't use anything else for the quick kills, so... I'm also going to have to give him the hammer. It doesn't really matter. The hammer and the hunting knife are almost exactly the same thing anyway. I wonder if I gave him the bolt-action rifle with one bullet, if it would gra drastically... No, it doesn't doesn't do it by that much. No, I'll give him the hammer, I guess. That, that should be good enough. So his task is to find ammo. I wonder if find fuel is less risky. No, it, it all seems to be kind of the same risk here and there. So I'm going to ask him to go and find some ammunition for me. And there we go. That should do the trick, I think. There aren't any more survivors yet, but as I said, you can collect more as you go along. And I believe they can actually die as well. Now, that is a feature as well as the inventory management that you get to do here. You get to store stuff in your vehicle, and you can also bring it on missions. So just transfer it over. There's no drag and drop interface here. This is clearly designed with a console in mind, so it's pretty weak source. But... The inventory management stuff is something I appreciate. If you're going to call your game Survival Instinct, then at least have stuff like that in it. All right, so 25% risk. That's fine. I'm willing to send him on that. No driving through that. We're on foot from here. Ah, boy. Bet them psychos came here, too. Yeah, maybe. Town circled their wagons, you see. Looks like a DMZ. If there's any gas, it'll be at Lucky's. All right, here we are. Enjoy the frame rate drops. This game has some pretty serious performance issues. Looking in this direction, it caps out frame rate. Looking in this direction, it immediately slows down. Not really sure why, because this game looks absolutely dreadful. It has very low FOV and no FOV slider, as you would notice. And quite frankly, texture quality wise, you know, you can walk around looking at bricks and it's like, it's not that important, but it looks pretty bad. Stuff like car textures is, is fairly awful. And what's worse is they don't even bother to simulate anything beyond the metal of the car. So let's listen to some sound. Sounds fair. I'm hitting metal, right? Let's hit glass. Look at all that dust coming up from the glass. God. I mean, the, it, it is War Z level of dreadful, like, in terms of its actual graphical fidelity. So the fact that there are major frame rate drops as soon as I look in that general direction is indicative of a terribly optimized port, which is not good at all. Now, the game itself involves some scavenging, some stealth aspects, as well as some combat. Most of it's melee, because if you use a gun in this game, it attracts, like, every walker within a 10-mile radius. So it's generally not a very good idea. The objective will be pointed out with this compass, although there are some optional objectives around the place, which are fairly wise to do, since... Although I've got a lot of food and health items, it does seem like bullets and things like other weapons are fairly difficult to find. This weapon right here, as we can see in the inventory, does actually have some stats. Light damage, close range weapon with a medium swing speed. There's a bolt action rifle I've got. It's only got a single round of ammunition in it at the, at the moment. Obviously, it's very, very good, but it does attract a lot of attention. I'm also dragging around fuel for some inexplicable reason. It's like, why would I be carrying that? Why would I just leave it with the vehicle? That would make much more sense. You can also carry glass bottles, which can be thrown for distractions, which is reasonably useful if you're just looking for a stealthy approach, as well as sports drinks and commercial MRE, which is a field ration. You can eat these almost instantly to get back a bunch of health. So the, the health system is pretty basic. It doesn't regenerate. It also doesn't really make a huge amount of sense, but... I mean, you've got to bear in mind that they have to change some things for video games, otherwise it, it just ends up not working at all. In this case, zombies don't really attempt to bite you, they just kind of swipe at you, which is really weird because they don't actually do that in the series. 
but I guess that was the only way they could make them do damage without killing you instantly or infect you. It's like, oh, they bit me, right? That's me done then. That wouldn't be much of a game, although it would be an interesting idea to try and implement into one. Probably some kind of short form game. Like, oh, I don't know, Zombie U that actually did that. There are some, like, biting kind of close combat elements, but... I mean, you just, you'd never really get bitten in those aspects unless you just absolutely leave it alone. Alright, so the stealth aspect is very, very basic in this game. As long as you are crouched and sneaking around, you can basically backstab any zombie as long as you don't dance in front of them. Even if you are in front of them, they take a little bit of time to kind of notice you, and then you can actually just execute them by holding down the middle mouse button. The execution is the same pretty much every time unless they're facing you, in which case it's a slightly different animation. You will always use your knife regardless of what weapon you have as well, which is just silly. All right, up the ladder, <laughs> which is an absolute... What the... Uh, did, did you just... You saw that, right? You, you did see that. Yeah, I, I hope you did. So that guy was actually here and then immediately teleported over there somehow, which is just absurd. Yeah, the cl climbing up and down ladders is kind of ridiculous. You, it, you're pretty much just teleporting up. It's, I mean, it's one of just these many small things within the game, when I haven't even got to the big glaring stuff yet, that demonstrates that this game was just a colossal rush job in every possible aspect. All right, so there are conversations. There are a few characters littered around the place. Pretty much just required for story here and there, and these are guys you'll be able to gather as well. So let's have words with him. Jimmy Blake, last standing officer of the Sedalia SO. Go for you. The cycles all over this place, too. The biters? Yeah, they're everywhere, man. Where have you been? Up in the hills, hunting. Didn't know nothing about them till they tore up our camp. Still don't. Uh-huh. Let me bring you up to speed. More of them come every day. We help each other survive, or we don't. That's it. Normal rules suspended for the foreseeable future. That applies to good guys. And to, uh, hunters. 10-4? Yeah, I get it. But who's we? The kid holed up in the gas station, and the deputy in the cell block. He's interesting. I want to do one last radio check before bugging out, though. Well, then do it. And the batteries went dead two days back. Can't find fresh ones. If you can, I'm happy to supply a little bird's eye coverage. I'm a hell of a shot. Batteries? Okay. I'll keep an eye out. I need gas, though. I think it's long gone, but the kid would know better than me. Voice acting, as you can see, is, is very much a mixed bag. They did get a couple of voice actors from the series itself who kind of phoned it in. They're, they're pretty bad. And then the ancillary characters are... I mean, they're... <sighs> serviceable is probably the kindest thing that I can say about it. Downright immersion breaking would be the worst, depending on which characters you happen to run into. If you want to know how far this is into the game, it's kind of about 20 minutes. I have gone further than that. Because I pretty much done this area, and then because I decided to quit out, get ready to do the video, and then come back in, and then suddenly realized it lost all my progress. Yeah, so my overall playtime of this, for my first impressions, is about 45 minutes. And conveniently, we've kind of gone back there. There'll be no use for money here, but it's just yet another demonstration of a really terribly textured prop. As regards to what engine this uses, I think it's just a modified version of the Modern Warfare engine, I think. I, I don't really see what else it could be, but if it is the Modern Warfare engine, then it's terribly optimized, which is kind of surprising. I mean, Modern Warfare pretty much runs on anything, so I don't know what the hell they managed to do to mess this up. Now, you might think there's quite a lot of free roaming going on here. Uh, it's very, very maze-like. The first level is completely linear in every way, to the point where they, they literally put you in a trench to avoid you being able to go off the beaten track, which is completely contrary to what a survival game should be. And I've been harping on survival games for a while, but in this case, this is actually a survival game. They, they put it in the title. They claim that that is what is involved in it. Now, I think the only way around this is to really go through here... I don't see any other way to do it, simply because everything is artificially blocked off, and no, you can't crouch, crouch under it, which is just stupid. You can't climb over fences. I mean, this gap here, which should be absolutely fine, you would think. No, you can't go through that. It's There's invisible and visible walls all over the place in this game, which is extremely irritating, to say the least. It is just awfully linear, at least at the start. It does, you know, to, to its credit in some places open up a little bit with optional objectives, which is okay. 
And those optional objectives, I think, are probably the strength of this game because they do give you this notion that, yes, you are surviving, you are trying to gather resources as much as possible. Stab him in the back of the head for the umpteenth time. One of the most effective ways of dispatching zombies, in fact, you know, pretty much is. As you can see, there's a second animation if they happen to turn around. Now, you can just fight them in melee as well, which usually takes about four or five swings now. It does say this is a quick swinging weapon, but it really, I mean, it's not that quick at all. Oh, look, another hammer. There we go. This is a bit more of a satisfying weapon to use just because of the sound assets they actually use with it. As you can see, you've got a inventory system here, which will allow you to switch between weapons. Mouse wheel works pretty well for this. In fact, I think you have to use the mouse wheel for that. All of the other keys are bound to these consumable items here. So yeah, it's it's a little dodgy. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it's definitely not great either. All right, melee combat. Now, any zombie that stands up will usually take one hit. Any zombie that's already standing takes more like five. It says to aim for the head, although single strike kills just don't seem to happen. The game claims it's possible without executions, but I've never seen it happen with the hammer. It may just be something you can do with the knife. Now, here is the, the grapple mechanic. So what happens here is if you get too close to a walker, what can happen is they will grab you, and you've got to aim at the head and then hit them. This is really weird because, as you're about to see, it looks like it was designed with a thumbstick. So, let's give it a shot. You, you say, see, sort of note the thumbstick icon right there, and then you sort of stab him. You take a little bit of damage as you continue to do that, but once you master it, it's actually one of the easiest ways to kill anything because it only takes one hit rather than the five that a melee attack will usually take. So much as I like to say, oh yeah, you know, there's something in there. No, you... You're not going to find that. You'll also find weird collectibles around the place, which is, you know, yet another, oh, I'm going to rampage on that. And why would I not rampage on that? It's so stupid. Survival instinct. Only take what we need, including this giant statue of a taxidermy squirrel. I'm pretty sure you don't need that. That is not going to help you survive in any aspect. But hey, achievement points. God, I wish those would get the hell out. All right. I'm going to head on over to the gas station here to, to speak to the next character and then head over there to the cell block because I know that's where the batteries are and I think there's a revolver there as well, so. Now, one of the biggest problems that I've got with this game is actually to do with the PC port. You know, there's a lot of little stuff where it's just obvious that the game is not up to snuff and cl was clearly rushed. And the fact that the game could be beaten in about three hours is definitely not helpful. There's already a completed Let's Play on YouTube of someone doing it in about that time. So it's supposedly possible to do it even quicker than that if you skip the side quests. So that, that's not particularly good at all. In fact, that's dreadful value for a $50 product. Yeah. I mean, if this was for 10 bucks, then maybe I could have excused a lot of this. But the PC port and its mouse acceleration are actually dreadful, and we're going to see a lot of that. You may have seen some kind of jerky movement earlier, but it gets about 10 times worse once you go into a indoor area. That's where things start to get really weird. All right, get gas for the vehicle. So we've got to go to Warren's uncle's trailer in the park. What I'm also going to do is head over to the police station. Going around there will get me to the trailer, but if I go to the police station, then that'll be good. And you might think, well, I should probably stealth this. Yeah, you can, or you don't really have to. It, it's really kind of up to you. Zombies are pretty stupid. Once one of them has spotted you, it'll kind of head in your direction. You just kind of backpedal. The rest will get disinterested, and then you can just hit him with the hammer and kill him. Now, it, you know, it's going to take a couple of hits to do this, but a single zombie is really easy to kill. You just repeatedly hit it, and then it goes down about four or five hits to the head. It has no chance of attacking you in that scenario. It gets permanently stun-locked. The only time you're really in any situation where you're going to be threatened is if there are multiple zombies, which is fine. I mean, I actually don't have a problem with that because that's, that's very zombie canon, isn't it? Zombies on their own are not threatening creatures at all. It's when they overwhelm you that things become problematic. As I was saying earlier, it will switch to the knife automatically regardless of what weapon you happen to have equipped. So let's head on into the police station, see what we can see. Now, this is where things start to get really weird. So there are some serious mouse acceleration problems in this game. Now, for those of you who don't know what mouse acceleration is, it's probably a term you've heard and maybe don't really understand all that much. It's when the game tries to compensate and create smooth mouse movement. It's... I, w I would love to tell you why it's in games, but I cannot find a reason. I 
just genuinely don't know. It doesn't make any real sense at all. But it's here. And it's here in kind of a big way. And indoors is where it gets really, really bad. It is very, very unreliable. It will jerk your mouse around in very odd ways. It repeatedly changes the sensitivity in areas for no apparent reason whatsoever. And that means the control is extremely imprecise. Just unbelievably so. I think I need to go around the back here. For some reason, of course, you can't jump through that. A anything you see like that, I can pretty much guarantee you won't be able to jump it. The game was clearly designed with very specific paths in mind. It kind of punishes exploration, so it's not a very good idea to do that. The exploration that it does have is limited to its fairly small selection of side objectives. I'm going to sneak around the side here and then just go in the back. As I said, sneaking is really easy in this game. There's not much to the stealth at all. If a single zombie sees you, just beat it to death. No big deal. Like, sound you would think would be an aspect, but like... I can kick this can around and the zombie that's around that corner just will not notice. It doesn't care. At all. There we go. Instantly dead. You might be like, well that was a corpse. No, it wasn't. You heard the noise there, so... I have to wonder if any other sound actually makes sense here. I would love to try and test that out. The whole glass bottle mechanic m makes it seem like sound is a very important factor, but from everything that I've seen, it is completely artificial in that basically the glass bottles tell the zombies around you to come in this direction, huh? which is, is just kind of bizarre. But as regards to actual sound recognition, I don't think the game actually has any of it. Gunshots will universally bring zombies from nearby, but actual other noise? No, I don't think so, as far as I'm aware. All right, so I've opened up that path a little bit there, which is always nice. Now, let's let's test the theory, shall we? So I'm right next to him. I'm going to start hitting this with the hammer, and I'm going to see if he detects it. Well, turns out he actually did, so there we go. The game doesn't really do a great job of... Showing you I suppose that sound really matters, but I guess that's not a problem I guess if you do make noise nearby it will make a difference. So there we go That's that's an allegation that has been nicely debunked. It's always nice to see, you know, I don't like hating games I can still execute them even after kind of hitting them twice as long as I just hold the button down At least so it claims but then for some reason it doesn't work half the time <laughs> The melee combat is just so dull as well. And what I will say is the sound asset for the hammer is actually really awesome. Like some of the sound assets are pretty good. Obviously, it uses some ambient stuff from The Walking Dead here and there. You hear the theme reprised every now and again. Eventually, you will die. Thank you. Grab the pistol and the revolver. Nice. Pistol and the revolver. What the hell are you talking about? Try that again. Ammo and the revolver. Thank you. So some of the sound assets are pretty good, others are weak. Like I showed you earlier, the whole aspect of like hitting glass and it sounding like metal is is just lazy. And this is this kind of gets into the main point, I think, about this game. So this game has a number of different interesting elements, like the whole being able to send survivors out to get stuff, the inventory management, the idea that you have to get fuel. There's even this kind of cloaked difficulty idea whereby when you go between areas, you make choices as to where you want to go and which route you want to take. If you take back roads, there's apparently a lower chance of breaking down. If you take the highway, there's a higher chance. But the, it's like uh, it uses, le uses more fuel, I think, and also there's, there's a greater chance of supplies or something along those lines. And that was scripted as hell, which was just a stupid jump scare, which I really hate. There's a lot of that in this game, which is kind of sad. You would think, oh, well, so once you eliminate the zombies in an area, it's not a big deal, right? No, there's a lot of scripting, and you're going to see that. Probably the most ridiculous example will be coming in fairly shortly. Now, did I actually... Sorry, I've completely forgotten as to whether or not I actually did what I was supposed to do. How do you bring up the objective screen? No, that was just the rifle. There's, there is another place, a storeroom around here that has the batteries that I'm looking for here. There we go. Hit him a few times with a hammer. Once again, he is of no threat. Same bloody combat animation over and over and over again, which is just irritating. It's like, come on, could, could they really not have varied that up a little bit? You know, a backswing, an overhead. Nope. Same swing animation over and over again. 
which is not that much fun. It gets very boring very quickly, to the point where you just want to avoid all the zombies. You know, was that a deliberate choice? Make the combat so dull that you would never want to actually engage the zombies at all after the first 20 minutes of gameplay? Maybe. Maybe. Hopefully not, because that's a terrible way of doing things. Uh, go away. Not much of a threat, as you can see. You know, they'll come up, they'll hit you a bit. It's like, oh no, I've taken damage. Thank God, I have this delicious Gatorade. Suddenly, damage is gone. Yeah, it's not like you're short on that stuff. That's locked, I think. This is the storeroom, if I recall correctly. Yeah, they don't randomize this at all, which, yeah, it, it, that's fine. That's not a big deal. You can put stuff in specific places. All right, just make our way out of here right now. So I suppose the main major concern with this game is the fact that every element of it just seems incredibly rushed. It's really quite lazy in many ways. And from the graphical fidelity, the poor optimization, the horrible mouse acceleration, the boring melee combat, and the level design, which is... It, it tries to pretend that it's non-linear, and it just is anything but that. It leads to the conclusion that this was a game that was shoveled out as quickly as possible in order to try and just capitalize on the success of The Walking Dead. Which is bizarre, because they already had a game that did that. It was called The Walking Dead. And you know what? It was also really, really good. Based on the graphical novels, but of course, needless to say, it very much benefited from the existence of the series. And then you've got this, which is far from that. Alright, looks like we can maybe head onto the roof here. Or maybe not. Is that... what the... Oh, it's a fire escape, okay. Like, can I climb onto the roof? No, I guess we can just use the fire escape to get out. Alright, that's fine. We'll just teleport our way down the ladder. Excellent. Shit. Looks like there are zombies around the place. It's okay, some basic sneaking will do it. Now, the, the real tragedy of this game is that it actually has some reasonably good ideas. There are parts of the game which are pretty atmospheric from what I've seen so far. And the notion of sending out survivors to gather supplies and proper inventory management, which is really surprising. I don't know, I would have just expected kind of a straight up shooter, and it's not. It's not. I mean, they did kind of get the idea. It's obvious that these guys knew what they wanted to do, but my impression of it is that they were not given even close to the amount of resources and time required to do it properly. And that's really sad. I mean, they may not have had the skill. That's definitely a possibility there. I mean, you know, as I said, they are, they are really not a, a well-accomplished development house, even though they've been around for a while. They've made some pretty terrible games. But I think that given enough time, given enough resources, they could have developed this into a really good game because it has some nice concepts. Expanding on that survival aspect and also the notion of having other people with you and being able to use them in some way. That's cool. You know, they could have just made this boring co-op game which is like, oh, it's Left 4 Dead, blah, blah, blah. But no, it's like, oh, survivors, go out and gather me resources. That's neat. And I like the idea of there being very limited ammunition, even though the, you just won't use it. I mean, I've got a bolt... I actually am carrying two bolt-action rifles here, which I guess it's fine. I can, I can store them. You can only carry ten items, regardless of what they happen to be. These apparently seem to stack up to whatever amount, but... Yeah, I could probably carry ten bolt-action rifles around with me. <laughs> or, you know, I don't know. You don't get a lot of ammunition, which is good, but you just... I've never found a situation where I would have actually wanted to use a gun. Because it is, it's loud, it brings zombies in, and you've got so little ammunition anyway, why the hell wouldn't you? As long as you can sneak up on them, which you can in almost every scenario, because they are dumb as bricks, then you can repeatedly just execute them over and over and over again, which is what I'm going to do through this entire horde of zombies. It's like, stab, stab, that guy's kind of turning in this direction. Occasionally, you'll have to throw a bottle here and there to just distract them for a bit. So we'll do that, and I'll show you how it works just for the sake of it. Which one is it? God, this interface so clearly designed for thumbsticks. There we go. That'll distract them for a little bit. And that might allow me to sneak past. As I said, they're pretty dumb. If it doesn't, it shouldn't be a big deal. 
There's only one situation where you're probably going to be at any threat of dying from zombies, and that's in these scripted events, which you will be seeing sooner rather than later. Oh, God. You know, this will be a lot easier if it weren't for the mouse acceleration. It makes the stabbing way, way more difficult than it should be, which is incredibly irritating. What the... Oh, he's there. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of standing around like a dope. There we go. Took quite a lot of damage there, but hey. Problem right. solved. <laughs> yeah, there's plenty of this stuff to find around the place as long as you're looking around for it. Yeah, it's, it, you know, the grappling idea is nice, but as I said, badly implemented, especially on PC. It's like, wow, this is all over the place. But at least it's not a QTE. It's like, press Q to kill. And I, I give them credit for that. You know, and that's yet another sort of idea that it's like, wow, if only they'd have the time to properly flesh this out, and if only the PC port of this game wasn't so god-awful, then I would have actually praised that as a cool mechanic and something that's moving away from a very, very generic game. The funny thing about this is that it's actually not generic at all. It's, it's not. And I am shocked because it could have been. It really, really could have. And they were trying to make something different. And then they were given like six months to do it. So they didn't have a chance really to truly finish this up. Which is just so, so sad. Now I'm going to explore this area thoroughly because there's one particular trigger which will cause a bunch of zombies to come at me. Regardless of how many I've eliminated in this area. Which again is another big problem that I've got with it. Because it just feels so, so cheap. It's also the second time it's done this and more than likely it will do this every single time. Once you gather the fuel that you need or access to the fuel, it will suddenly spawn a bunch of zombies that will come at you regardless of where you are, even though they had no idea you were there to begin with, which is just awful. It's, it is so, it is such a cheap mechanic designed to kind of heighten the tension. It's like, oh, better get running. Like, come on, really? I mean, Lord knows how he knew I was there. He had his back turned to me and I was stealthing, but... Yeah, it's, there's, some, there's definitely some inconsistency in how the zombies react to you. Alright, going to distract those and then I'll just eliminate them one by one. So I don't necessarily have a problem with the way that they've done the stealth in this game. It's just that, again, like so many other things in it, it's just not in any way fleshed out. Is he going to get up? Pretty much anyone that sits like that probably is, but in this case, no. Alright, that's fine. I think we can probably just come up behind him and execute him. There we go. Stabby, stabby. This friend is oblivious. Stabby, stabby. Yeah, I'll take it back. There's actually like two animations for that execution, but it does get rather boring very quickly, especially when it's the optimal way to beat every zombie in the game. Alright. As you can see, I've been artificially walled off here for no apparent reason. That The game loves to do that, which is rather annoying. Get off. It's like, I'd stabbed him a few times, but... Yep, and then there's another one. <laughs> the worst thing is, if you're up against four or five zombies, they'll chain that, and you'll have to do it over and over and over again. They won't both try and grab you at once. They'll just kind of politely stand around and let you beat up their friend. But uh, that's just the way of it. In this case, with one zombie at a time, there's no point in not engaging them. There we go. Check the pool. I'm just looking for items, really, here. Which, I suppose, is the one thing that really prolongs the game otherwise. If you were to just bust your way through this game, which you can totally do because, as I said, it's not very difficult. Then I just have the feeling that you would blitz this game in about three hours, I think. Alright, let's go get the resources that we're looking for and then... So there's, annoyingly enough, there doesn't seem to be anything interesting here. It's funny, it's just how sparse the game is in many places. You think, oh, I can go around looking for resources. This entire trailer park, none of the trailers are actually accessible. As I will demonstrate. Yep, this is not a door, even though it looks like it. And they've boarded up all the windows just to make sure. It's like, this is a piece of scenery. This is not something you can go in. Which, in a normal game, I'd probably be okay with. But in a survival game, I'm not okay with it. It's like, why can't... You know, there's probably useful resources here. I mean, this is Hicksville Trailer Park. There's probably ammunition. There's probably ration packs, drinks, and all sorts of things I could get. But no, they just they just didn't bother to make those areas that you could explore, which is the height of laziness. Okay. Now, if I recall correctly... There we go. Just deal with this guy. 
That, that was the uncle in question. Now the key should be right there. I just, I killed him before he could get up. Please tell me I didn't just break the sequence, because if I did... Where's the... Oh, man. I think I broke... No, no, it's up there. All right, excellent. Which is extremely odd, I might add, because the last time I did it, it was over here, because he was carrying it. So I guess if you kill him before he gets up, it spawns the keys directly on top That's of here. It. Big thanks. And here's the zombie spawn event. As you saw, they just literally teleported in out of nowhere. They came out of these inaccessible trailers, which is just utterly freaking ridiculous. It's like, time to get out of here. Yep. It's just, it's cheap. It is so cheap. It's almost like it wants to kind of force you to use your weapons. It's like, well, this is the time when you better use your guns because every other time in the game, it's completely inappropriate to do so. I guess that makes the most sense. Also, this character can run for about three seconds. It's so annoying. It really, really is. I mean, come on. It's, art it's artificial tension and difficulty, and it's super cheap. I mean, where, were th where did they come from? They weren't there last time. Are you kidding me? Also, my mouse acceleration is going kind of nuts in this area. At least those guys shouldn't be able to get over. I'm just going to draw him in, and then I'll just hit him with my melee weapon. Since I'm out of there, it shouldn't be too big a problem. Ugh. The aiming is made all the more difficult by the horrible mouse acceleration. Bang. 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 Always four hits every bloody time. <sighs> No, it doesn't get more interesting than this by the looks of it. This game's... I, I would go as far as to say this game's almost a tragedy. It's not like I expected anything good for it, but every time I find something that's reasonably interesting about it, I say, wow, if only this was in a game that didn't suck. And it never is. <laughs> it's like, oh, guys, come on. More accurately, Activision, come on. You know, give them... Give them the proper time to make a game that doesn't look dreadful and play dreadfully. Give us a proper PC port that doesn't have horrible mouse acceleration, no FOV slider, and performs like crap on a GTX Titan. I have a Titan in my machine now, and this game is dropping below 60 frames per second. It, the texture quality is Half-Life 2 level, which was impressive back then, eight years ago. Is it now? No, not at all. This what you needed? Just right. I'll run the scan. In the meantime, I've got you covered. I'll be ready to leave town when you are. Meet me back at the north side of the barricades then. Yep. Look forward to getting off this roof. That works. Make sure you're there when we go. You're gonna get left. You got it. All this wonderful dialogue. What a contrast, one to the series and two to the point and click adventure game. Oh, but crying out loud, really? You're really gonna do that? Yeah, put a zombie at the bottom of the ladder. Uh, a good placement for it. Go away. And another. Can we... Are we done yet? Uh, hmm. I'll probably best distract them. Otherwise, this isn't gonna work out well for me. Not bad. I do appreciate the lack of regenerating health. <laughs> that's that's good. It's one of several mechanics in the game that's like, yeah, this is... They had ideas. And they didn't have the time or proficiency to execute them. And I think the last thing which is just really worthy of talking about, because I'm kind of going around in circles on this whole great ideas, lousy execution point, because I just want to show you more of the gameplay, is the idea that they thought it was a good idea to charge 50 bucks for this game. This isn't out in Europe yet, only out in the US, so I don't know what kind of European price it's going to be, but I can I can pretty much bet that it's going to be equivalent or even higher. There is no way in a million years that this game is worth $50. I would struggle to say it's even worth 10 because as I said, it's just not very good in any real respect. A couple of interesting ideas here and there does not justify that. I've criticized indie games for having interesting ideas but lousy execution. In this case, this is a fully fledged retail release. For $50, a licensed title that is charging full price for a game which is under no circumstances deserving of that amount of money. D there is no way. Why Why would you pay this that much? I just can't fathom. Oh, this stupid maze is irritating as well. 
It's like, well, you can't go through that way because, no, come on, don't do that. It's just artificially inflating the length, which is hilarious. I have a feeling if they let you around this maze properly, this, you could probably do this game in like an hour. And this is how they, they just put awkward terrain everywhere just to artificially lengthen it. It's a disgrace that Activision could think that this was worthwhile. They sometimes publish really, really dreadful video games. Sometimes they publish pretty good ones. Licensed, too. The Amazing Spider-Man is a good example of a game that was actually pretty good. Had some weird stuff, like the ability to web swing from literally nothing. <laughs> that was bizarre. But I guess it was a compromise that made the game more playable. But here... Mm-mm. Mm-mm. This is a cynical cash-in. It is shovelware in the worst possible way. But the most tragic thing is that it probably didn't start off like that. And it was forced to become this horrible, horrible unfinished cash-in. Hey, you got it? Yep. All right, good deal. Uh, open the Ginny cage. Are uh, my dad and Uncle Lester behind you? Just get the pumps on, okay, Warren? Oh. Okay. It's all ready. Open the cage and hit the primer. Not exactly the emotional moments of Walking Dead by Telltale, eh? Like, yeah, just a little heart-jerking moment in there, I suppose. But it was so weakly executed that it just didn't do a damn thing. <sighs> so my conclusion. It's a mess. I don't think anyone thought it was going to be anything else. But I guess we just, we had this hope. Don't yell, you idiot. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, that, you're the one shouting, you moron. The generator's not actually making any noise at all. God, it's barely any. All right. Fill it up. Now, if that didn't draw them, then the gunshots certainly will. There we go. Funnily enough, this is actually only one gas canister. Am I going to have to run back and forth here? Because that is, that's pretty lame. Maybe there's a way over this that I can use that ladder. Oh, the running's so frustrating here. Come on, let me up. There we go. Oh, great. <laughs> well, that's more zombies in the War Z can spawn. Drops the frame rate pretty hard, but hey. Right. I wonder, no. I, I wonder, it's like, I wonder if you can, no, there's going to be no way in a million years that they're going to let you do that. That's the game in a nutshell, isn't it? Will they be distracted by a bottle after spotting me? I'm going to go with probably not, but I'm going to try it anyway, just out of curiosity. No, not at all. So I guess we just jump them and run. Da 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 da. Yeah. It's all right, get into the green box and you'll be pretty I safe. The damn truck. And that's it. There we go. Scavenger results, he came back with pistol and rifle rounds. No collectibles found because like I'm gonna look for that and I guess I'll show you the map and movement mechanics before we finish off so this is the camp screen that it, you can this is the current vehicle that we've got and that's the number of seats and inventory slots it's got you can even change your vehicle around if you found one again another great idea horribly executed in a really weak game I mean just look at all this stuff like, the survivors have a condition, occupation, particular traits. I didn't mean to actually dismiss him. I guess we have to get rid of someone. We can't... How can we not fit them in the truck? It's like an, it's like an open bed back truck. They should have no problem at all. Oh, man, really? Can't dismiss him because he's part of the story. Hey, just look at all these cool ideas. And then just look at how must they ruined it. Ah. Oh. Who are we leaving behind? I guess we'll leave him behind. There we go. So the amount of fuel that you've got is actually you know, an aspect of it. And you can even go to different places. You know, it kind of branches off here. I assume you end up at the same place anyway, but you get to choose which area you do it in. If you want to travel here, back roads, streets or highways. And you use a different amount of fuel... There's apparently a high chance of breakdown, which I don't really know how that works. Let's try it and see if I actually the car actually breaks down. That would be pretty interesting. I wonder if it's... The vehicle is overheated. Search the area for coolant. Okay. Yeah, so... 
I guess that's what happens there. It gives you this kind of little mini game segment, I suppose, to go find coolant for your car. Again, another great idea. But the game's just not fun to play. I'm sorry to tell you. It's depressing, actually. More depressing than I thought it would be. I went into this game expecting shovelware, and when I ran into good ideas, that's when I got sad. Yeah. Activision messed this up a lot. They obviously pushed this out to market way, 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 way too quick, and it's nowhere near worth full price. If it comes down like 10 bucks at some point in the sale and they patch some of the glaring PC port problems, then out of curiosity, I'd probably say, yeah, give it a try because you may find some mechanics that you really enjoy. I very much doubt they're going to be able to improve this game to a level even close to a $50 price tag, though. I'm sad now. Man. Usually I go into zombie games thinking, oh, God, another zombie game. And it's like, oh, that's neat. Oh, this isn't. I'll see you next time.